Hello all, Shoestring here. Today we're going to talk about off-grid cooling, which is very difficult when you're talking about just running off batteries. Some of the questions I've received lately have been over these Arctic Air they're selling. Not the ones that go around your neck, one of these little square units. I have one. It's a couple years old. But when I looked online last, they still look and work pretty much the same. What I wanted to do, though, today is talk about how many watts does it take? And how long can you actually run one, depending on your battery capability? So let's go ahead and do that. Here we have our Arctic Air here. It's plugged in the USB in the back. For the demonstration today, we're going to use our kilowatt. And we're going to use a um, solar generator just because we're outside. Now these coolers are supposed to be used in a small space, in a very small space, normally set by your bed while you're sleeping, aimed at your head, because they won't produce a whole lot of cold air. So let's go ahead and see what we have here. Take our plug, go ahead and put it in. Get our watch to zero. All right, plugged in. Watts are at zero. Dance in just a little bit. But yes, back to zero. So here's the Arctic Air. We're going to go ahead and turn it on, which is the big button on top. Which automatically, by the way, at least on this model, brings it to high. And yes. Oh, you need to put water in if you've never used one before. Also told tips, put a little ice, few ice cubes in, so I did. So, has water, has ice cubes, and it's surprisingly quite cool, actually. Uh, it's not come well, it act, for its size, it's coming out pretty good. Don't know how long it would last, but Mrs. Shoestring, by the way, loves these. She has one by her bed, and when it gets hot, she uses it, and she says it works really well. Okay, so... You can also change the colors on this, but we're not going to do it. You can also use it like a nightlight if you wanted to. Off, on. Okay, so let's go back and take a look at the kilowatt. We're going to say 4.8, because I always like to use the highest one. 4.8 watts, which is what? Practically nothing. And it's still, I know you can't feel it, but it's still coming out pretty cool over here. I like that. Okay, anyway, just for people that want to jump in and say so, no, I don't sell these. I don't have a website that sells these. I don't have a link where I get any money for it. I'm just showing you ways to cool down when the grid's down. You can't really use your air conditioner. Okay, so here's the fan. We're going to bring it down one notch. We'll call that medium. And what has had that done to our kilowatt? We are down to... Oh, we'll say 3.5. So 3.5 for medium. It has decreased the airflow a great deal. Yes. And one more. Really low. Okay, let's take another look. And okay, we'll say 1.8. Which is practically no watts at all. No, I don't have one of the, the little thermometers to point at it and say, well, how much cooling's actually coming out? I just use my hand and tell you, hey, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and so the Arctic Air actually works. Don't know how long it'll work. Probably have to test it. But at the moment, all we want to do is look at a couple of things. Does it cool? Yes. It's not going to go very far, right? Small space, a small bedroom or right by your head, in your bedroom. But it's not going to cool a lot. But it does have cold air. This one has been used for about two years, like I said, because Mrs. Shoestring uses it, and she likes it, and she says it works. And another major reason I wanted to do these videos is because if everyone's seen from the headlines, there are power outages all over the country and heat waves, massive heat warnings, all over the country and both of those together of course are extremely dangerous so anything we can do to help our families 
and ourselves stay cool, no matter how small it might be, in a situation that we're running into this year, I think is worth looking into. Okay, as we saw from the voltage that it was very low, it will work a good long time. All you have to do is figure out the size battery you have and how you're using it. I used, as you saw, a solar generator. But I could have used an AGM battery if I wanted to. Or if you have the money and you want to get a lithium, you can do that too. But do not use a wet lead acid with these Arctic airs in the house. Because wet lead acid batteries has fumes and vapors. And they can cause a problem in the house. So, safety tip. Use a solar generator if you have one. Use an AGM battery. This is a small little one that's 12 volts and only 18 amp hours. It will also run it. But do not use a wet lead acid. And this, of course, is how it would look if you had it set up with the battery and an inverter. Same basic principle, except I'm not using the solar generator. It's plugged in the inverter, which is, of course, connected to an AGM battery. AGM once again because we're using it in the house. Okay, and one of the biggest constraints with making this device work is it must have water. If it does not have water, it will still run, but you will not get cool air. So remember that for cool air, must have water. If you want it to run all night, then you put it on low, and it will normally run all night, Miss Shoestring says. But if you put it on medium or high, it's going to run out of water, and you're going to have to sometime in the middle of the night come fill it back in, up with water. So remember that. Fill up with water and keep it filled with water. The higher the motor runs, the faster the motor runs, the faster the water comes out, and you'll have to replace it. If you like this type of video, please subscribe and like it and shoestring 